All right, it's um, May 8th. This is the uh, Conway Board of Selectmen, uh, our weekly meeting. Uh, we're being recorded by Frontier Community Access Television for posterity. Hope everybody who can't be here at the meeting will tune in later on. First item on the agenda is uh, minutes of the May 1 meeting. Yes, seeing you here, John, I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes of the May 1st meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Good. Thank right. you. Uh, next item is meetings attended by select board members. We have any since last time? We had two. You had your. Okay. We had uh, Monday night, we had the pre town meeting. Mm -hmm. You know, and we were sort of officially there, I guess, right? Mm -hmm. and, and then we had a meeting with the, with the, the lawyer, with the town lawyer and the, the historical commission mm -hmm. on Thursday. Right. Right. Okay. And we were all at that meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Did any, you have another meeting? No. No? Any, any other meetings? You didn't have an FCAT meeting? Oh, we did have an we FCAT We did have an meeting. FCAT meeting. That's right. We were we were at FCAT. <laughs> Look at that. One. How do you know? <laughs> <laughs> we went to an FCAT meeting. And we had our, it was our first FCAT meeting over in, in Sunderland in our new digs there over in, in Sunderland Town Hall. Sad to be leaving South Deerfield, but How's it, was, it was great. No, it's it's huge compared to where we are now and clean and and uh, it's got heat. Wow, uh, that helps. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that'll be an excellent space. Excellent yeah. space. Anything else? Yeah? Okay. Have to ask Bob. Yeah. Citizens' concerns. Do we have any citizens' concerns? Seeing none, we'll go on to... Uh, we have any old business, Tom? No? New business. Mm -hmm. Okay, first item on new business is... Um, Coles that wants to pass over town-owned land. You're on, Jacob. Good evening. My name is Jacob Macko. I'm a mass licensed forester representing W.D. Coles Land Company, a landowner out of North Amherst, Mass. Um, owns two properties in Conway. The property in particular tonight is Coles Peas Lot, which is set back um, off of a few town roads, in particular Cricket Hill Road. Um, previous access was old town road that has since been discontinued, I believe in the late 1800s. Um, currently the road is in good standing. Um, it passes through the Commonwealth of Massachusetts property um, and two other private landowners and entirely through a town of Conway town farm property. Um, 28 acres of the property were destroyed by the tornado. That's our main goal is to salvage what we can. We're pursuing USDA grant money. You might be aware of the program that's available now. Mm -hmm. yes. um, just access has always been difficult on this lot and this is the best time to pursue access through our neighbors. Um, so Coles is hoping that the town will allow uh, Coles to pass and repass over town property with uh, to occasionally pickup trucks and agricultural equipment uh, to move the debris and whatever wood material across town property. Um, hopefully the wood can be landed on state property as close to Cricket Hill Road as possible. When, when did you guys last have access over, over the, the town farm property? That has been documented at some time. Okay. Um, and the road and the road that's uh, indicated on this on this plot is an open road at this point. Yes. Um, currently, I believe the town maintains it to some degree up until the cemetery. Um, and and you're talking to the state about their land. We are currently yeah. in discussion with the state, uh, pursuing permissive access as well. And, and after you're finished, you'll leave it in the condition you found it in, or better? Or better, yeah, definitely. Ron, do we still have, we still uh, maintain that road? We, we do limited maintenance to the cemetery. Okay. The snowmobile club does do a fair amount of um, upkeep to the road, though. Is the cemetery on the town farm? No, it's on, cut down, yeah, on town property. Any other questions for Jacob? 
What do you think uh, the duration of the project is going to be? Hmm? It's always difficult to say in these circumstances. Um, we could start if permits are in place and the state is agreeable as soon as a month. Um, and duration, we like to keep it in line with the duration of the cutting plan permit, which is originally two years mm -hmm. and then an option, two options of one year extensions. So two one year extensions. Um, so you'll be bringing us back an access agreement to sign? Yes, we can all work together uh, to find a mutual agreement that works for both of us. Okay. okay. Any uh, any other questions? This agreement looks good that you gave us the example. Okay, we can. Uh, I can uh, edit that. that agreement to reflect the town. Any any objections to this? No. Yeah. I'll make a motion that we uh, we permit uh, Coles to gain access to their peace lot over the. Uh, the town of Conway, a town farm over the road that's presently um, goes across that property. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Jacob. Appreciate your help on this. Thanks so much for working with us. Okay. <clears throat> have a good night. Have a good night. A lot of other land you can help clear too. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll be in touch with Thomas. Yes. Moving yeah. forward. Yeah. yeah. Right. Thanks Have so a much. good night. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Now we're expecting Greg Rose. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, why don't Why don't we skip down to? Might not be in for another five minutes. Yeah. Okay. Let's skip down to the municipal vulnerability preparedness grant proposal. Yeah, I have uh, just a little, a little bit that I wrote up on this. Um, I attended an informational meeting Wednesday at the Franklin Regional Council of Governments on the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Grant, and I'm working on an application partnership with Ashfield in order to earn, increase our chances of being funded as there is only $500,000 available for 30 to 50 municipalities or partnerships. And there's already a considerable amount of work that's been done on the South River in this area, which makes Ashfield a potentially useful partner, as well as work we have done in our multi-hazard mitigation plan. Mm -hmm. The FERCOG is being trained to act as a resource for this and would also act as the grant administrator. I'm going to solicit participation from potential team members in the town, including the Planning Board, Conservation Commission, Open Space Committee, Agriculture Commission, and Emergency Management Director, and will need a letter from the Select Board approving the proposal. I plan to have this as a joint letter with the Ashfield Board of Selectmen. You may recall we did a joint letter uh, in support of uh, mm -hmm. an initiative uh, project up on a year or two ago. Yeah, yeah they're a project on the dam, right? Yeah. Did that go anywhere, do you know? Uh, I don't know uh, whether or not they, they got that or not. Um, the, the problem is it's, it's a very tight turnaround. Um, I would actually need uh, a sign-off on a letter next Monday. The grant is due May 18th. Um, and uh, I'm working with uh, Kimberly at the COG mm -hmm. as well on, uh, on putting together the, the, the application itself. So between Casey and Kimberly and me, we're, we're hoping to get as much as possible done this week mm -hmm. because uh, Kimberly's actually going to be away for a while um, after the end of this week. So, um, so this is we'll basically to, to work pretty on, this, on the South River? Well, that's what we think we have the best chance of um, applying for, partly because of some of the work that's already been done. Uh, you remember their work on river corridors, uh, so we'd be probably working on river corridor management, uh, maybe some zoning changes, mm -hmm. um, trying to protect some of the area that the, the river might meander to in the case of an extreme weather event, that sort of thing. All right, so this is almost an extension of our, our multi-hazard mitigation plan. It, it would allow us to do uh, uh, planning specific to uh, climate change, yes. Okay. Uh -huh. 
Any other questions? Would any of it be here in Conway or is it all oh, yeah. upstream of us? Uh, well, it, this uh, we'll see what we can come up with, but uh, we figured at least we could try to work with Ashfield on the South River. Yeah get together as a partnership because there will be a lot of people applying for these and if there are 50 municipalities getting $10,000 planning grants that lowers our chance of getting one. There's a sense that a lot of communities because of the tight timeline aren't going to bother applying this time. Mm -hmm. On the other hand there may be communities who think well if not a lot of people are applying we're going to apply. Mm -hmm. sure. So we're not sure how that's going to play out but we know that working in partnership is going to count in our favor. Right, we so get to uh, eventually to look at different sites in town that on the river. We better be paying fairly close attention to that corner above uh, Hickory Ridge Road. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that shop corner up there where the river comes right in close to the road there. Oh and, yeah. And, uh, matter of fact, I think it's coming so close now. I don't know about that. The state uh, state covered where it goes under the highway may have been down on it where it dumps into the river, maybe collapsed on it because of it. Mm. And it's eaten back into that bank of ways there, so <clears throat> something we've got to be looking at. Yeah, culverts are definitely a major <clears throat> part of this, some uh, maybe on state of this kind of initiative. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay, any other questions on this? So I'll, right. I'll, I'll be back next week. Uh, yeah, so you need a letter from us next week. You don't need anything right now, now, but basically a... With Ashfield. Yes. <laughs> it can be tricky. Yeah. All right, so we don't need to vote on anything right now. Okay, and we're looking at uh, proposal for trees. We don't have. Uh, they go over here shortly, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know when uh, Rue was planning to come in? She said 20 after. Okay. Well, that's okay. another five minutes. All right, Tom, do you have your update for us? Yeah. And it comes with lots of lots of numbers. Not in this one. Uh, in departmental news, on dogs, I received another complaint about the dogs residing at 651 Graves Road with an accompanying photograph of the dogs near the intersection with Boyden Road. These are the same dogs? Distance from their residence. And the dog officer is also informed on this incident. As of Friday, all of the dogs are registered and vaccinated for rabies. Uh, two under Mr. Moriarty's name and one under Ms. Graves's name. Uh, a little tornado update. I made a site visit to the Fournier property on Tuesday with representatives from the Department of Conservation and Recreation and Natural Heritage. There are two areas of damage, one major one near the front of the property, more or less bordering the field, and a smaller area further back. It looks as though we won't be able to create a cutting plant and complete the work by the end of June, though we might be able to by the time we set the tax rate for next year. Since we're deficit spending, the costs need to be made, made up in next year's taxes, or conceivably the year after that, if we move into the next fiscal year. I'm working with Allison Wright Hunter on how to create the cutting plan, which needs to be cleared by Natural Heritage before we start working. Um, I'll also be going out with her uh, uh, soon um, without uh, DCR there to, to start work on that cutting plan. Um, it's quite possible we'll have to hire a consulting forester to work on the cutting plan as Allison's duties as a service forester of DCR are circumscribed but that part shouldn't be too expensive. We would just add it to the deficit spending on the tornado. Right. Uh, the treasurer has an item, I, uh, which I've tentatively scheduled for May 15th, discussing the process requested by the Hampshire County Group Insurance Trust to allow changing the plan's co-pays, or really any aspect of the health care plan. The treasurer will be in to explain the situation. The process involves prior notice to the teachers and instructional assistance unions of a select board meeting to discuss and vote on accepting a particular statutory provision 
and then a second meeting to make any proposed change in the plan under the newly accepted process, which uh, will be proposed by the Group Insurance Trust. And I understand that it, the proposal is one that would raise the co-pays modestly. Mm -hmm. uh, and do you think we'll get a lot of pushback from the teachers? I have no idea. Mm. Uh, a conservation restriction for the Sheehan property off Maple Street is set for the first meeting after May 15th, whenever you choose that meeting to be. Uh, for town meeting, the administrative assessor has informed me that if all the spending items in this tax, in this town meeting's warrant are approved, and if we assume there is no change in the taxable land base, next year's tax rate would be about $18.45, or a rise of 70 cents from this year. With any rise in the taxable rate, the increase will be less. Uh, I'm sorry, with any rise in the taxable land base, oh. I should say, sorry, uh, <coughs> the increase will be less. Of course, state aid final figures are not in yet, so this is very much a preliminary figure. She also came up with... So is this a lower number than you were estimating earlier? Yes. Or, I mean, you... Yeah, okay. I, I try to have the news be good as time goes <laughs> right. on. That's right. It feels like uh, good news. Yeah. And uh, here's a little packet that uh, we produced. Um, First, it has her um, tax rate comparison chart updated for fiscal year 2017. Mm -hmm. uh, so we can see where we've been over the years and where we are now. Um, so if we had that, that new tax rate this year, we would uh, be up over New Salem and Buckland. Uh, but, of course, everybody's going up next year, presumably, or mm -hmm. mostly. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, we don't really know where we'll stand. We are now above the halfway line, but not too much. So, Oh, and uh, again, this, uh, these are regional tax rates. It's not just the county. There are some Hampshire County communities that are included in this plan as well, just to give us a... a uh, it, more of a Western uh, theme to it, though I will also note that Amherst is on here as well as a nearby large town. Right. Yeah. So, and the uh, our immediate neighbors are in bold. It's a little bit hard to see on this one. If anybody wants the electronic version of this, I'll be happy to send it. Uh, they're in, in different colors. Uh, so that's the that's, that's the first chart. Oh, and, and, and I draw your attention to one thing. Um, in FY13, you notice there's an asterisk yep. next to Conway. Mm -hmm. And in the bottom, um, in FY13, Conway lowered the tax rate by 150 using free cash. Mm -hmm. You'll notice that the next year, the tax rate went up to 15.68, or almost two dollars. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I, I will use this as a cautionary tale to say that uh, it may be possible to lower the tax rate using extra free cash, but it does catch up with you um, mm -hmm. later. Uh, so the other, the other charts um, have the average single family tax bill. So it would have been 1520. Three or four. Yeah. Down yeah. Mm -hmm. Conway has the highest rate of valued homes in, the, in of all the towns. Does that mean our assessors are doing too good a job? <laughs> <laughs> well, they're just applying state law. Means we have a good grammar school. What they would say. Um, so uh, you can see the average family tax bill, Conway is the uh, second highest, or um, 
more more recently and uh, was the highest back uh, 11 years ago. Um, so we've always been near the top, um, again with our average single family house value uh, being um, relatively high, which of course uh, makes the tax bill rel relatively high. Um, statewide, of course, we're well below the average, but that includes a lot of, you know, wealthier eastern municipalities. So relatively speaking, uh, real estate values here are high, but they're nothing compared with eastern Massachusetts. Uh, well, easily in the ballpark of Deerfield, Waitley, Williamsburg, we're all pretty close. You know, so that mm -hmm. Deer, uh, Williamsburg is, is a lower average value on homes for a higher tax bill. So they must, I wonder if their homes have more land attached to the home or something. Well, they maybe. have a higher, have a higher budget. tax rate. Well, maybe, they yeah, they, they have a larger budget, so they have to pay for it with a higher sure. tax rate. Um, and then, uh, finally, there's a, there's a comparison, not just for those um, intermittent years, but um, compared with 2008, which was when property values were at their highest. Um, and this is, this is sorted by the number of single family homes in the town. And you can see that in the, the fifth column over in the, the second, second bunch of three. That's the number of single family homes. So um, Conway there is almost exactly in the middle. Uh, in fiscal year 2015 with 599 single family homes, I think we're uh, uh, considerably over 600 at this point, but, um, but not, not too much more than that. Yeah. Okay. So, so these, these are all ways to get a handle on how things have been changing over the last few years, where we stand regionally. And uh, one more thing I, I'd just like to point out on that, on that first chart. Uh, I pointed it out before, but I think it bears repeating. Uh, if you take out Irving and Rowe, which of course are heavily subsidized by their power plants. Sure. Um, yeah, in, uh, in FY 2005, which is as far back as this goes, Deerfield's tax rate was 1175 and the highest tax rate was Warwick at 20. And in fact, the highest tax rate went down to below 19 um, for until fiscal year 2010. So actually, if you start in two, it's a little easier to see if you start in uh, 2006 or 2007, over the past 10 years, that highest tax rate has gone from 18 or $19 up to almost 23. Mm -hmm. And that is directly correlated with the decrease in state aid to cities and towns. Um, likewise, the lowest tax rate went from 10 or 11 dollars up to over 13. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the bottom isn't growing quite as quickly, but, but the top has gone up considerably, so much so that it looks as though that in the next um, four or five years, uh, towns like Shutesbury, Amherst, Greenfield, Heath, Leverett might start getting close to that $25 cap, yeah. in which case you cannot tax anymore and you have to cut um, your services. So uh, that's, that's a long-term trend that, again, I think bears repeating. Mm -hmm. <coughs> right. Thank you, Tom. Any questions, ask Lee. Don't ask me. Okay. <laughs> So there's a Good. tremendous amount of information. Yeah. Yeah. All right, next item, uh, again, we're waiting for people. They Ruin them right here. Oh, okay. Tom, um, why don't we get uh, Rua in?
You guys can come in and sit down. Come on, by all means, have a seat. They don't bite. They growl a little bit, we don't bite. Roy, how you doing? Hi. Good to see you. Hi, Roy. Hi. Hi. My road ball nice theme. You. Your road ball theme? Yeah. yeah. That's right. Here we are. See you later. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Pumpkin Hollow Street Treats. Uh, I was asked by Helen mm -hmm. to um, help figure out how to recover from tornado damage. And I um, talked to Heidi and a number of the neighbors, and I spoke today with Ron. We went down there and uh, made a little map and have some thoughts. The basic thing is uh, a, a seven or eight trees came down, mm -hmm. and there are a lot of stumps in the area. and. It's a part of the green, it's at the uh, little maps if you want to see them, on the top of the green where the X's are where the trees are down. And, um, uh, and, and there are left two um, maple trees, one in decent shape, one in mediocre shape, and two locust trees which are weed trees uh, that were um, way too close to the other trees and are still too close to the maples were obviously volunteers and not planted there and um, so I think there's a significant question about whether this would be a very good time to get rid of them. Um, there are a lot of stumps in the area and I talked to Ron about the fact that this is the perfect, perfect time to plant trees. We don't have any water there, there's no hose, you know, this is it right now, okay, like today, you know, and so I would really like to move this along. The other reason is because um, of the 250th coming up, and even if they're new trees, fine, you know, at least it'll be cleaned up and, you know, looking like it has a future. Right now it looks like it has a past. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that would be the idea, and um, let's see. Uh, I've been looking, because I was on the streetscape committee in, in uh, the past when we were doing the street plantings, I have a lot of good lists of, of street trees that are uh, recommended for our environment. Um, I strongly recommend that we plant large shade trees, what they're called noble trees, in that, you know, kind of occupying the space that was occupied before by big maples. Maples are not a good choice. They are not salt tolerant, and uh, they grow slowly. So uh, I'm, I have not got a final recommendation for trees, but I'm inclining toward uh, elms. There are several varieties of disease-resistant elms. I planted them, I've seen them planted. They're, they're back on the street tree list, and likely what was there, uh, at least in part, because they are the archetypal New England village green tree. So, uh, you know, and they're available now, well available, in good shape in, in commerce. So uh, that would be one. There are other very nice uh, big trees, like tulip trees, Sick, which get to be you know 100, 120 feet tall. Sycamores are beautiful. I mean, it depends on how thickly we plant. If the stumps can come out, then we can put in more trees. If the locust please will come out, you have to authorize it. Those the locust trees. Yes, uh, I would re highly recommend that we take them out. Those two them out. Yeah, yeah, we have equipment that'll just pull stuff out. Yes. How many trees are you thinking of? Um, I'm, I'm going to have to, see, I, I, I only just realized talking to Ron that the canopies of the trees have to stay off the road now mm -hmm. because apparently shade on the road is deteriorates the road. I, I didn't know that. I was going to say these look like they're a little bit close to yeah. the road and the, close together. The, 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 old, the X's were the, were the down trees. Oh, they're yeah. the down Those trees. Those are the trees that are lost. Oh, yeah. So, so, so there were seven of them that came down. Yeah. So seven. where are you planting? for the new trees. Well, same area, but further back from the road, and and taking into account canopies, I'm just going to have to work out how many. But if the locusts come out, um, and frankly, that little, little thing between the two maple trees is a rock mm -hmm. with a dedication on it, and mm -hmm. there's a bench, I, I recommend that that and the bench be 
move to a good spot. Maybe we even add a bench, a little seating area. Um, the residents tell me that a lot of bikers come and, you know, people use it to kind of rest, you know. And now they're just lying on the grass, you know, doing that. And it would be very nice if it was a little more amenities there for them. But I don't, I would rather plant that, actually, that rock. You know, in other words, I'd rather a rock was under a tree, not in the place of a tree. Mm -hmm. So that I think you'd end up probably with four or five more trees. Mm -hmm. Depends on their canopies and how, what, I just have to work out the dimensions. About how tall do they get to you? Well, all these trees are 100 footers. And the cool thing about the elms is, first of all, they grow like mad. I mean, they mm -hmm. really are fast. Like, once they get moving, you know, you can pick up eight or ten feet a year. Mm. Wow. And the other thing is they like this. I, the ground seems uh, wet or damp. Mm -hmm. It's got a lot of clay, apparently. And so uh, that would be, I mean, there are a number of good trees. The ones I mentioned would also love it. Okay. Uh, secondary thing, you know, is it would be good to take a, whole, a look at this whole green, it seemed to me. This would be later, depending on a little more money from Garden Club or donations. But Waitley Road is busy, and and there's no road green buffer there. It's just right on the road, and there are kids playing, and you know it just seems like if, if there were a little more buffer planting, I'm thinking low ornamental trees that are, don't require care, but would be attractive sort of ways to screen off the green a bit. Mm -hmm. And also at this end of the green, there are two little apple trees and a couple of um, drains. And we were thinking of possibly one big, you know, tree down there at that end, because nothing's going, nobody ever goes there. It's just mm -hmm. too narrow, you know. But that, that would be later, and obviously I'd you know, present a plan to you reason why I'm moving past here is because I really think if we have a planting opportunity right now and if we wait in the summer, it's, it, it's, the trees just get more and more risky because they dry out and it's sure. just harder. Mm -hmm. So there's that. And the final thing is that there's, um, and I have not spoken to her, Mrs. Held. Yes, so Mrs. Held is part of, been working with us with the 250th. She was able, she feels strongly that there used to be chestnuts, American chestnuts down in that common area. So she reached out to the American Chestnut Foundation who has volunteered to donate somewhere between two and five trees to the town of Conway to plant in, down in that area. Her original idea was to put one at this end of the common and one at that end of the common. Um, and I mentioned that to Rua and Rua was concerned about the type of tree. Uh, they were in the past prone to blight. These ones apparently have a resistance to that. Um, I don't know the ins and outs of that, so I'm just, that's as much as I know. Um, so, but, um, so she's trying to get them here in time for the celebration, kind of have them in the parade and then plant them as part of the celebration. Mm -hmm. um, so what Rue and I talked about was reaching out to her and maybe in lieu of putting them on the common, maybe looking at, there was a bunch of trees also along um, this leg of Waitley Road between Mags and Steve Thomas's, God, the last right. name finally. <laughs> that big open field there? Um, there used to be a row of Old maples there. there. Yeah. Um, maybe we could plant some there. Maybe that'd be a better maybe. location for them. But we'd want to, you know, I think you guys own probably, what, the first 10 feet <coughs> off the road or nothing? It's, it's fairies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Our right of ways are not okay. determined by the, from the, by the road. Okay. Um, so and I'm not sure what the right of way is. No, you have oh. to try to determine yeah. where right. the right of way is. Okay. And, so, yeah. and on that, uh, she had found some historical evidence that there hadn't been a chestnut on the common that had been a meeting place right. uh, and, and had been uh, a well known local function. But uh, I understand that, um, of course, their, their seeds have the sharp. That's what I would worry about. Uh, They're going to drop things, things on a the, park where people are playing. And so, which is uh, why we thought maybe I the think, other side of the road would, I agree. Yeah. Maybe would be more. Agree. So I think you guys that. are going to get back and talk with Marjorie yes. about that. Ron very before. kindly offered to figure out whether this area, you know, right catty corner. Corner of the town dump road in mm -hmm. the cemetery. I'm not sure if the town owns that whole chunk. I think Mrs. Devine owns it. Mrs. Devine owns a little piece of it. Between the uh, dump road and the cemetery. 
the whole triangle there. Is there I believe it's owned by Mrs. Devine. Is, is any of it owned by the town at all? That's where it snows ice cream version. Okay, hmm. but oh, in there common. may be, really? I know the town owns more than the cemetery there. Right, so we just need to figure out what. Part. And there may be, we lost one big tree there. Right. That may yeah. be a good place to, but the problem with a chestnut is they're a very dirty tree mm -hmm. as to maintenance, ground maintenance, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I think it's in the town's best interest if we kind of limit where, I agree. Maybe because yes, we got volunteers now that take care of places, but what happens when we don't have you know, like our common area. I agree. I, I think we really got to be paying Sounds attention. Sounds to me like the best is right along here. But that uh, will have there. to probably be okay yeah. okayed by the landowners. Yes, yeah. that was that, yeah, that we were going to talk about. And if, I don't know how it will be as far as the farmer goes hay in the field. Okay. Uh, I, just a little quick footnote about chestnut trees. You know, they were a huge part of our canopy, 30% of our forest. They're, they're incredibly kind of like invasive plants, in fact, mm -hmm. except that they were wiped out by this blight. The American Chestnut Foundation has been working on restoring chestnuts, backcrossing them with Chinese chestnuts, or trying to find disease-resistant strains that are still alive around here. They haven't gotten that far. I mean, they yeah, they're trying, but it's not like the elms. I mean, there aren't any really good chestnut trees out there to purchase. When you ask them for one, they will give you between three and five, and that's because most of them are going to die. All right, so it's a crappy tree, you know, in a way right now. It's just not there as a street tree. And even so, I think if there was one on the common, it was more like the locusts that got there, not because somebody planted it. Okay, but because they were so invasive. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying it isn't historic, but I don't mm -hmm. think it's a part of our history we, we should repeat. Okay, so Elms, do you think are the way to go? I do, or, okay. or you know, I'm, I'm happy to consider well, all, there are a few alternatives. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there are some alternatives. Um, we so have five hundred dollars. Right. So what I know right now from the tornado relief, I was sent one check from a garden club in Massachusetts. Um, Five hundred dollars towards buying trees for the hollow. That's not going to go far. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, if we have help from the town that can stump it, that's going to help. So we're not paying that cost. Um, but the question is, and you the know, my garden has a lot of So what okay. does a tree cost? Uh, yeah. These are going to be I twenty feet tall when you buy them. I mean, the, they're probably well. well we're going to get them wholesale, and we're going to figure out where to get them. Now, I, I, I the nursery yet, but. I know John Kinsler, who has Amherst nurseries. Those are trees being grown locally, cold rain, you know. But he's not growing elms. He's got um, London plane trees, which are basically sycamores. He's got tulip trees. He's got some cool trees. And so, if we don't find good elms, there are some alternatives. All of them being native trees, by the way. Mm -hmm. In addition to being what are called noble trees, which means they're 100 foot tall or yeah. more. Mm -hmm. You know. So one way or the other, we'll work it out. We, so I guess the so final would, it, would it be your intention to just between now and, and the uh, 250th weekend to take when? that $500 and get as what you can get for trees and at least get them planted for now? Yes. Probably yeah. in a week or two, mm -hmm. if I can. Okay, because the you? No, I better. think elms are beautiful. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. But like part idea. of that is that the stumps need so. to be out of the way for that. You'll have to be the possible. judges to number because of the money. So. Right. Yeah. 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 But we, we can talk to the garden club. Maybe we can pull together some extra money. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Not asking for the town any money, but we do need loans thrown back and Services. machines because <laughs> of the stumps. We, we can't do this if it is stumped. No, I understand that. And sure. we want the locusts. We want your permission to take those two. Yeah. Oh, the two that are the there. The two that are there. Yeah. You can take it right down. You'll see them. You'll see the healthy season. maples, and then you'll see the no, Ron, stalks I mean, Ron of locusts. had most of them down because they were destroyed. I mean, but mm -hmm. You you recommend we take those down? Or? I do. Okay. I think for what okay. they're trying to do with that area, okay. it just makes so much sense to clean it up and make it a nice. Try to make right. it nice again. I'll make a motion that we uh, we grant permission to take down the two locust trees and to get the stumps out and to plant elms in accordance with the plan that uh, Rua and uh, uh, come up with. And so you're talking three or four, or I mean a small number. I mean, but there's plenty of room down here. 
But Ellen's got big, you know? Yeah. And you, you don't want to over plant. Right. Yeah, I'll that? second John's motion. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Let's here. get planting, Heidi and Rua. Thank you. Great. Okay. Super. Thank you, guys. Wonderful. Appreciate your work on this. And thank you to Ron, by the way. You know, without home, yeah, this is good. <laughs> Hopefully not your strong back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get out there with okay, that. Some machines involved here. <laughs> we'll see if we get you that what, tree pruner. You can get those logs out in no time. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess I guess Greg is not coming in. Greg Rose. I hadn't heard. Had you invited? I thought you were going to invite him. No, I was not going to invite him. No. That was the last I heard from you. So I will uh, make sure he gets on uh, okay. next time. We thought, right, with me so and John we'll felt, I thought we thought we had to discuss this a little bit further ourselves before we go talk with him. And, and again, it all depends on what, we're going to, what happens tonight. So. Yeah. Well, that, that, that's fine. We can, we can discuss it now, certainly on the agenda. Well, I just don't hold off. Do you know anything? I mean, the only thing I know about it, I know from you. So all I know, all I know, is I talked to Greg, and he said that he would be willing to consider a discussion with us about purchase of the property. Well, we have we have right of first refusal. So, okay. Yes. Okay. What? How much land is there over there? It doesn't say what acreage. Right. Eight. Area says two. Is that two acres? It's about one one acre. One well, it, it says. Oh no, that's the value. I'm sorry. Yes, two acres. Two acres. Oh, area the, two. The value right. is forty five thousand of mm -hmm. the land. Building. I mean, there's a lot of things to consider here. Assessed at 174. Right. And I've also heard differing opinions about its age. This, it says it was built in 1773, but there was somebody saying that they didn't think that it was that old. Um, so the house itself is in very, that. very poor shape. Even Greg will tell you that. Well, I, I think our, our, our main focus on this would be the land anyway. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Um, if it is a historic structure, we would of course need to have it inspected, all of that sort of thing, to find out what it what it was. Then it might there could be various this is like alternatives. It means one acre. I mean, forty five thousand. That's feet. that's the valuation, though. I think. Oh, that's the val. Oh, the it doesn't say dollars. Here it says. Here it says. I don't know what area two means. Is I that, think it means two acres. I believe it's two acres. The location oh, okay. on the map, but. But we can uh, It had to be two acres. It's got to be close. Because that was our code. Right. When they subdivided it, they had to give them two acres. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, no, we have a one acre. Yeah, because the, it, it's, um, uh, the building is also missing its dollar sign mm -hmm. there. So. Mm -hmm. It's got to be two acres because it goes up and, in the and field and a little right. ways behind the house. Too. Detached so. structure. So. Those are all dollar figures. I guess it's two acres. Greg would know that we talked to him. Yeah. All right, well, we can, we can look that up on our maps. Um, all right, anything else on that for now? I don't think so. All right. Um, any announcements? No announcements. Okay. Next meeting is Monday the 15th. Uh, six, we we, we might that? mention this is an announcement. What's that? We're going to talk about this. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, Phil Cantor got an article in American <coughs> Art Review. Um, about the uh, the uh, Stevens exhibition, um, quite a long article, lots of lots of photographs in it, um, some of Lester Stevens and some of artists who have painted his house, who are part of this uh, Rockport art uh, group that has um, taken such an interest in his paintings and that's helping putting the exhibition together. So, oh, great. American Art Review for June 2017 has. Uh, quite a bit of uh, uh, information on the paintings. Good. And that's the uh, the exhibit we're doing of Lester Stevens here at the uh, at the anniversary. In the yes, in the, in the library, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. The library will be open um, most of the day on Saturday and Sunday, and uh, in the evening on uh, Friday. Good. Maybe open Thursday as well. I'm not sure. Okay. We have concerns of the selectmen. We have any concerns? I do. I got a couple of things for. Want to come up, Ron? I've got a couple of things I would like to talk about to get ready for the fiftieth. Okay. I think Ron can help us out on this. They're not huge things, but when we had the storm uh, after we had the tornado uh, a few days later, 
we had that huge power outage by McDonald's again, and in that common area where Waitley Road starts, yeah, this is 116 this way, we had the in a common area, mm -hmm. the power line came down and drilled the ground big time, mm -hmm. across the common like this, and it's all glass. But when electricity melts into the ground, it takes the soil and turns it to glass. Mm -hmm. The glass is now exposed up in the air above the surface level of the grass. We need to get in there with a back or something, dig that out and put some good loam in place. Uh, you, you see, it's definitely glass right there. I'm afraid some kid's going to run over and get some cut up feet. Uh, so I think that's something that maybe Ron could take care of for us. Well, here's where my issue is. And I'm not trying to make it look like I'm not trying, willing mm -hmm. to help, but I've got two projects that need to be done by the end of June. Two pretty good sized projects. Mm -hmm. um, Chapter 90 money, it's all based on fiscal year 17 bids. I will do what I can. Weather's not helping in any way. This one. I know it won't help. <coughs> well, it's like the Look pumpkin the hollow com mm -hmm. common there. You know, it's, um, I will do what I can to help, but I have to make sure that my projects don't mm -hmm. get messed up time-wise. Mm -hmm. And I'm having trouble with scheduling right now, which is not good. Well, I had trouble with because you guys signed the paperwork back in December for that, and mm -hmm. it took me two and a half months to get my environmental punch list signed by the ComCom because it was a concern mm -hmm. about the wording on the sheet. So it just got I just for got which project? Which East Skinny Road and. Bergy Road, Williamsburg Road, yeah. and South Asheville yeah. Road project. So I'm kind of behind right now on that, and the weather definitely hasn't been. <laughs> but I would, that I one's. Is there any way we could have snows take care of that? They're supposed to be managing the common land. They are? They are? Yeah, well, they're, well, they're supposed to be mowing it. They, they can't are. mow it no, the way it is now. No, snows don't do it. No, no snows don't do it. Oh, I'm sorry, Bear River. Bear River. Bear River's Bear right out straight. Bear He's Bear lucky he can keep up with his mowing. And I don't, he has, doesn't have backhoes or anything that can, this is probably a less than a one day job. Yeah, yeah. no, I know. It's just and one you know, more thing. And the only other thing that I had, and I want to present this at the same time, just so you know, and I always took care of this when I was superintendent, those little bit of wrought iron poles that were over there in the grass around the town hall mm -hmm. are rusted in spots. All I used to get was a can of rust oleum high gloss black and just spray them every once in a while to make them look good. I mean, that's another, but it needs a dry day to do that. Yeah, but right. um, just, just, just to post them, so you don't got to worry about the change. Just up this far, what's happened is, I think, is from them weed whacking over the string trimmers, no. they tend to knock okay. the paint on them up off mm -hmm. the ways. And it is, it's ugly because they're rusting. Mm -hmm. and, they're, and we're going to have, that's going to be at the center of our 450 mm -hmm. location. We should have them looking happy. Yeah, that's not a problem. There. So that was the only two running around. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Good. Um, Thank you, Ron. Uh, all right, next meeting is Monday the 15th at 6 o'clock here in the town offices. No other business has come before the board. Mm -hmm. I will make a motion to adjourn. Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. Okay. And now we're off to town meeting.